it was a rough market and they didn't still didn't find anything so they're they're just on vacation they're like all right we're we're done you know so for a little while but now is actually the time to say all right well i i feel like maybe now's a better time for your buyer to get in How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of The Sean and Matt Show. My name is Matt. That is Sean. And welcome to our show, Sean. Thursday, May the 30th, we're going to be talking about the Northern Virginia real estate market and what we're seeing as an update. Now, this isn't going to be, you know, hey, let's dive into all the exact numbers and the exact science. This is going to be an update from the trenches, from yeah. the front line, pardon okay. the, the military jargon there. But um, Sean and I are full-time real estate agents in Northern Virginia, and uh, you know headlines can be misleading, right? And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. You know, talking to people at the grocery store can be misleading, depending on who you're talking to. So, what is it actually like? We're also going to get into uh, zero-down mortgages, which are making a comeback. Oh, geez. And yeah. taking a look at uh, Bethesda's most expensive property. Okay. Sean. So, let's start with um, a post from Echo Title, taking a look at the last ten. Fredericksburg area contracts. Now, here's the question. Fredericksburg, is that Northern Virginia? We talk about Fredericksburg as Northern Virginia. I mean, I'm the worst at this. I always get it wrong. So, <laughs> What is say. the right and the wrong answer? <laughs> I guess the right answer is it didn't used to be Northern Virginia, and now it... Uh, I, I don't think Fredericksburg wants it to be Northern Virginia. No, I don't think I don't. Northern Virginia wants Fredericksburg to be part of Northern Virginia. Yeah, but, but it's, it's close enough. You know, it's within a 40-minute drive. close enough. Plus the extra time spent on 95. Oh my God, 95. Have you ever driven down there? You guys know our pain. And thankfully, I don't have to drive down there much, but geez. So last 10 Fredericksburg area contracts. Three sales price lower than list. Three sales price at list price. Four higher than list. What I found interesting, four contracts with the full home inspection contingency. Two with void only, four waived. And then seven out of 10 uh, included the financing with the contingency now, okay. so this is the ten last. These are the ten last contracts, contracts that a title that company. a title company received. I should have uh, said okay. that uh, up front. So this, this is from Echo Title, ten last Fredericksburg area contract. And it, even if you're like, hey, I'm in the Burke market, why why do I care? Hey, I'm in the McLean, I'm in the Arlington market. Who who cares about Fredericksburg, right? I think you should because I think that Fredericksburg is like the first sign, right? Some some of these outer pillars, outer neighborhoods, outer towns, outer cities start to start to bend, start yes. to crack, start to increase more than then and then it and then it works its way in in inwards. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, we've always said like the trends start in DC and they kind of push out or start in Arlington and they kind of push out. And then the the exact opposite happens in the in the you know when it comes to the other the, way. The right? outer so ring. The outer ring starts to retract first and then it starts coming back in. Uh, and it's not always that way, but it, it kind of seems to follow that trend. So if you're looking at Fredericksburg and you're saying, okay, well, the last 10 contracts on single family homes or the last 10 that they've received are now uh, the three sales prices were lower than list, which is tip typically like we're just coming out of the spring market and we just got hammered in the spring market with multiple contracts on single family homes, multiple um, competition, and a lot was going on. People are waiving everything. So now to see three out of 10 lower than than the actual asking price is telling us something. It's telling that the market is cooling or that there aren't as many buyers out there um, or that inventory is rising. So we don't really know which is which, but it's telling us something that, hey, the buyers are starting to get little deals here and there. And it's not to say that 10 contracts goes to tell you the, the all-encompassing Fredericksburg or Northern Virginia market, because there is... You know, we let's got you know, all these little sub markets. You know, are different. The the Falls Church market, you know, can't really be of compared course. to uh, the Fredericksburg market. Sean, I pulled up another graphic of Arlington County and like the last fourteen days of closing. All you got to look at are these red arrows, mm -hmm. and you're seeing about nine red arrows to one uh, green down arrow, and a, and a couple green down arrows as we get into some of the the more luxury end properties. But what we're starting to see is uh, the spring property markets closing and all of those sales uh, now being registered. But I don't know how many red arrows signifying 
uh, someone paying over the asking price. We're going to continue to see as we're entering in Memorial Day, Mother's Day, Fourth of July, flag wow. flag days in there somewhere. Um, you know, all these summer holidays, and then you get to July and August, and 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 then we have Labor Day coming back around. So I think what I'm getting at here is that we're going to continue to see new inventory, but I, I don't think we're going to see the level of activity that we saw in the past couple months. No, I don't think we are. Um, it's funny when we look at the inventory and we, like we said, we go over this every week. I did it this week and I didn't see any huge upticks of inventory. Um, but then again, you know, I'm not seeing a ton of activity and this is what we say every year is like, we see from maybe February to uh, mid May that that is the hammer time, right? Like that is when everybody is jumping in competing. That's when everybody wants to buy. And we see multiple contracts and then come Memorial day. Memorial day was a little earlier this year. So it kind of threw me off. It was late May, but, um, not the end of May. And that's when people are like, all right, it's summertime, man. I'm out of here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go party. And let's, uh, let's get away from work. And people stop thinking about real estate as much for a while there. They obsess about it. They obsess trying to find the place and then all of a sudden, they obsess about summer. They obsess about going on vacation and feeling free and just getting done with it. And so I have definitely felt this in the last couple of weeks. I've, I've felt a pullback. Not only am I not as busy, I was so hectic, crazy busy in the spring. Um, and now all of those are going to settlement. So I have like a bunch of settlements coming up in the next couple of weeks. But the listings that I'm putting on, and granted, you have to be careful because Maybe some of these aren't single families. Maybe they're not all in Arlington, but they all have a different kind of feel. And so the two that I have in Arlington right now are condos currently, and they're not receiving the action that maybe I would have a month or two months ago. And and the thing is, like a lot of people are, they're there, but they're not quite there. You know, I think the condo has to be perfect. It does, right? The the interior. The amenities, um, the condo fees, I think if one of those things isn't matching up with their expectations, they're just going to sit on the sidelines for a little bit longer. Yeah, and that's another thing. You brought up a good point with condo fees. Um, along this whole orange line, it, I talked to a lot of the managers, and they've all complained about their condo fees going up. And are these going up? Are mine going up too much? Everybody's are, and everybody's have because of inflation. And now these these condo fees are if you look at any building out there, they're they're high. You know, they're they're getting higher compared to what we used to see of like, you know, a one bedroom with three hundred and fifty dollar condo fee. Now they're like five hundred bucks, five fifty. Um, two bedrooms, you know, six fifty to eight fifty to nine hundred. This is real dollars out of people's pockets, and it's real money when it goes into not only a high condo fee but a high interest rate. And you're looking at, my gosh, it's going to cost me five thousand dollars a month to to own a, you know, a one bedroom den, or I don't even exactly know what it is, but it's a lot of money. And so people are thinking, man, do I want to pay this? Should I move forward with a condo that has a higher condo fee or should I, uh, should I come down on the price or, you know, so the psychology of a buyer in a condo market is like, well, are these condo fees going to continue to go up? Is my payment going to continue to go up? Or if inflation comes down, will the costs come down and will the condo fee come down a little bit? I personally have never seen condo fees come down, but it's a possibility because we are in such a high um, inflationary period that we, we've seen like, you know, just going out to dinner. It's like, my gosh, you can't go out to dinner anymore without like, I take my family. I used to get, get out, go out to dinner, like, you know, 70 bucks max, you know, 75 bucks. It's, it's at least a hundred dollars every single time. You know, it's I went like, out to dinner in Clarendon, <laughs> just my fiance and I, the other night, uh, a, a place I hadn't been to before. Yeah. Um, she ordered something. I, or we both ordered water. So there's no apps, no desserts, just straight water. Um, I ordered the steak frites it said market price. I'm not going to ask him what the market price is. Steak frites. So, all right, it's fine. It's, it's, it's a decent restaurant. Like it's yeah. not super nice in Clarendon. Like how nice, you know, can it be? Get the check. The, the total came to $94. Oh my God. For two people, two entrees, water, my steak, Drinking no, water. no water was free. The steak frites. Fifty-seven dollars. Oh my! Fifty-seven. God. Now, I didn't expect it to be twenty bucks, but I expected, hey, maybe thirty, maybe 35. thirty-five. Yeah, maybe forty. Fifty-seven. I get the bill. I almost spit the water right out. It's like, oh my oh goodness, my God. yeah. I, it's surprising every time I get my bill. And the thing is, the funny thing is, like, I feel so cheap sometimes. But I was like, the kids' drinks, right? I'm like, 
you're getting you drink a third of it. What right? do the kids drink? What's their order? You know, a lot of times we're water, but like sometimes we'll have the fun drinks. Like, oh, let's get whatever. What, what is their fun drink? drink? Like their a fun soda drink might be like no, lemonade. like a lemonade, like a like um, okay. you know a. Uh, uh, they take know, five, strawberry lemonade. They take like, five sips of, of the strawberry lemonade. They take five sips, but you look at the price and it's four dollars and ninety five cents a drink. And I'm like, all right, for four of us, that's twenty bucks that I'm spending on stupid sugary water, right? Like, why am I doing this? So, just as an experiment, experiment, and plus we didn't want the kids to have the sugary drinks. So I was like, let's all just drink water. Like, I drink water almost every time if I'm not drinking a beer, right? And and I have been I've slowed down the beer intake, so I've my bill has gone down mm-hmm. significantly because of that. Um, but we drank just water, and it was like. 20 bucks less. And so maybe that's the thing is like those stop, stop spending money on your drinks, man. Just is this what <laughs> financial experts say when they say you can afford a house by not spending money on the drinks? Yeah. I'm telling you, if you just uh, don't buy the drinks, you could probably afford that condo. Yeah. Or that house. Well, speaking know? of condos, Sean, I texted you the other day, Arlington condos. Okay. 1800 Wilson right down the street. Yeah. 2021. The year is 2021. 26 condos sold in this dang building. 26. That is amazing. Now, to be honest, that's high, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Not, you know, 2020, people kind of held off. 2021, things were good. Everyone's selling. 2022, they were like 13 condos that sold. And I don't know how many units are in 1800 Wilson. What did you say? Like 200, 250? Probably like 250. Something yeah, like that. So it's not a small building. And it's, you know, not one of these 500 unit buildings, but it's a fair amount. Last year, 2023, is when we're starting to see the brakes put on. Okay, um, so we had 26 units in 21. 2022 had 13. 2023 had six. So we're basically half. We're half-lifing every wow. single time. Like, divide yeah. by two, divide by two. 2024 is zero. Wow. So five months into the, to the year, call it maybe, are we six months into the year? We've had zero. Now, I don't know. Maybe everyone is going to listen in the fall. And by the way, Sean, I'm listing another condo in uh, Pentagon City. Uh, it's a two bedroom. No two bedroom has sold there in eight months. There, ha- there hasn't been any listings. No listings. So That's crazy. We can talk about hey, inventory is rising twenty percent. We can talk about hey, there's no more multiple offers in, in some of these areas. But at the same time, I, I mean, I pulled up a graph. You know, there's there's five houses, five detached houses in Arlington under between like eight hundred and a million dollars. Like there's still not that there might be six if you want to include a tear down, but there's still like not that much inventory altogether. It's but we're just seeing higher levels of nothing. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, it, it totally makes sense, and and that's it's a funny thing that you bring up eighteen hundred Wilson because my example was Windsor Plaza. Windsor Plaza is up in Boston area. Um, I used to live there for a while, and I do a significant amount of business there. But in two thousand twenty three, there were zero sales the entire year. Typically, they have between 20, 10 and 15 That's sales. That's probably per year. never happened since it was built in 1994. Yeah. So, my marketing piece, I was like, yo, zero sales in your building. Like, who's listing just their property? Just send a blank flyer. It just says nothing on yeah. it. Yeah. So, I'm listing my fourth one in there right now. I have the fourth one personally that I've listed this year in there. Well, and is. there have been probably five others, six others. So, already this year, there's probably, I, I think, I would say between eight and 10. Sales. And there'll they'll be a boomerang. So if there's zero this year, there's going to be, you know, 10 the next year. Mark at 1800 it'll, it'll right now. <laughs> yeah. Hit it hard. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, I mean, that's the thing is, um, you know, the markets change quickly. Uh, we do see seasonality. Um, we go through psychological bends like every real estate agent does, right? I mean, like we go through these. I was talking to Matt earlier about this. Like, you know, we work so hard for that spring market because it's like, you know, it's like fishing season. You know, it's like you only have a short season. Everybody's going nuts trying to get all of these things in, going multiple contracts, getting your listings done. And then all of a sudden, the summer comes and it's like, you know, things pull back pretty significantly. And then the buyers aren't there. The listings, you know, some are trickling on, but the buyer activity isn't as hard. And, and so, like, we go through the psychology of, like, man, we just spent six months of work, 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 seven days a week, you know, grinding, trying to get our clients in there, trying to get our listings sold. And on the market in that time frame, and then all of a sudden things pull back, and you're like, all "Right, I'm not, I'm not as busy. Am, am I going crazy? Like we start going, like calling other agents. Hey, are you busy? No, like no, I'm, I'm, I don't have much going on. And and honestly, like we get so burnt out too. At the same time, we're just like, oh, I need a break. You know, thank, thankfully, it's we need a break. But then all of a sudden, you're like, well, I'm not making any money either. <laughs> you know, well, so it's these psychological things yeah. that agents go through that people don't might not get and might not understand. 
um, that we all go through. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the business, 20 years, five years, we still go through it. And, and I think it's good for other agents to see that, hey, you know, me and Matt go through it too. I know there's a lot of people that are, that are uncertain about their future in real estate. We have a lot of commission shakeup going on. Um, and we all feel it, you know? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of articles out there about realtors, you know, quitting the industry, not making, you know, money, whatnot. We, we don't need to go into that, but you mentioned burnout. And so Sean, earlier today, I went down to the DC courthouse. You know what I did? I got my marriage license. Oh, okay? dude. So the thing was, I looked up the reviews of the marriage bureau online. They're horrible. They're so bad. Everyone says, everyone says very nasty things on the internet, and uh, especially yeah. nasty things about the DC marriage bureau. So I had like the lowest of expectations, and the people that work there, they don't want to be there, right? They want to be anywhere else yeah. in the world. Oh than, God processing this is my job my marriage <laughs> application like they want to be in a beach in mykonos yeah. right like i want to be in a beach in mykonos so sure. i go into it thinking how can i you know put a smile on their face and whatnot and we're the first person in it's 8 30 in the morning just opened up and they could not have been nicer and more efficient and easier and really? more pleasant to work with then it got me thinking what would happen if i went at like 4 p.m <laughs> on like a friday afternoon <laughs> of them dealing with the general public because my fiance oh. was like, yeah, they're nice because they haven't had to deal with a bunch of idiots like the whole day, you yeah. know, demanding things from them and, and treating them, you know, like they're like they're not a human being, exactly. right? And they don't exist. And so you mentioned burnout. Maybe if your clients are taking a break or taking a vacation, maybe that's a good time for you to step off the gas a little yeah. bit, take, yeah. a, take a vacation. There's burnout on all sides, right? There's burnout buyer fatigue we've seen. We're, we've been talking about where... You know, we talk to agents and they're like, my buyers are pretty much done. They, they didn't get a house. They they fried themselves trying to get these places. They've they've competed. It was a rough market and they did still didn't find anything. So they're they're just on vacation. They're like, all right, we're, we're done, you know, so for a little while. But now is actually the time to say, all right, well, I, I feel like maybe now's a better time for your buyer to get in because they're they might not see as much competition. They might be able to get these home inspections like we saw. Granted, it's Fred Fredericksburg. It's 45 minutes out, but it's a telltale sign of what's going to happen to the market. Um, and, you know, anything can change. I want to caveat, you know, put that caveat out there. Interest rates could could drop and it could spur some activity. But I really feel that we are in the summer months now and we are going to see slower activity and it's going to slow. Come July, it's going to slow more. And then August, it's going to slow more. It's kind of the typical realm. Then we'll see a slight uptick on the fall market. Um, and so I think the rest of the year is a buying opportunity, a better buying a better buying opportunity than it would be for the first six months. Mm. Right. Let us know if you agree with that in the comment section down below. And if you're liking this discussion, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Sean, let's move on to our next article. This comes from, to us from CNN.com. Zero down mortgages are making a comeback. Okay. So mm. uh, many Americans would love to buy a house, but they just don't have the tens of thousands of dollars to cover the mortgage, the down payment, excuse me. A new program offered by... United Wholesale Mortgage and Matt Ishbia is saying that you can put 0% down, hmm. okay? okay? So the way it would work is the program will allow buyers to pay for 97% of the home's value with the first mortgage and then provide the remaining 3% up to ten up to $15,000 in the form of a second mortgage, okay? So first and a second. The second mortgage won't accrue interest, but it will need to be paid back in full as a balloon payment when the home is sold, um, the mortgage is paid off, or if the owner refinances. So um, other ca caveats is that mortgages are only open to first-time home buyers, and then those that are making no more than 80% of the area's media income. So you can't go out and buy like a million-dollar house as like your fourth house right. if you're going to use this. But Sean, for the first time home buyers out there for, you know, price points most likely below um, $500,000 in that range. What are your thoughts on another avenue for um, a renter to become a homeowner? All right. Well, it's twofold. Number one, it's great to be able to buy a house with nothing down. I mean, like, you know, investors or people always say, like, put as little down and, you know, uh, then gain equity and then take that equity and you refinance or you pull that out and you put it on your next one and you keep going and keep going, right? That's a great thing. That sounds for like burr. Some that people, sounds like a rental property. It, yeah, it's it's fun for some people to think about in that way, but there's a lot of risk in that. 
Um, and m- the first thing that comes to mind for me is risk. Um, 100% financing is very risky in any market because you just don't know what's happening to that value. Um, I get it that um, it can be hard for people to save money to bring a down payment, but you know what also can be hard is paying your mortgage. If you can't save money to put any money down, how are you going to save money or be able to afford that mortgage? And I know that they're going to underwrite this and make sure that you know their, their incomes work, but you also got to make 80% of the median income in the area. So it's like, you're limiting yourself and like, where are they doing loans? Because you can't buy one here at 80% of the median income here. Lots of America. Uh, I was looking, America, I pulled here, up though. Instagram mm-hmm. and I saw this beautiful new construction house. It's like new construction, in Texas. Like this could be your dream home. I look, it's like 15 minutes from the Mexican border in like the very South of Texas. It was like um, McAllen, Brown, mm-hmm. Brownsville, Texas, kind of Rio Grande river. It was a nice house, um, two hundred forty-five thousand. I don't know what you do down there, but I think, dude, you sleep on like most of America. Yeah, you can buy like a pretty nice house for like three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand dollars. Right now, you would say, oh well, I don't want to live there or like Idaho or uh, look, you do you. But I'm just saying, like, there's a lot of America. And UWA is that um, Matt Ishiba? Ishbia, uh, I mean, they're like the number one U- UWM. They're like the number one lender in America. Oh, like they, they cr- dude, he owns the Phoenix Suns. Mm. He's forty four mm. years old. That's crazy. He's a billionaire. He's he's got to pay you know book and Katie's contract somehow. So it's <laughs> doing out all these zero uh, percent down loans. So yeah, I think the the real key here is what's your current rent and what would the mortgage look like if you were to do this zero percent down because. It's super sketchy. Like, it's all fun and games until you hate your house and you have negative appreciation, which means like you, your house is like gone down in value. Maybe they're building a lot, or maybe you you know something has happened. You can't predict appreciation, right? Mm-hmm. If you if you want to predict appreciation, like go go do options, right? Do options trading. But like yeah. we think that the market's always going to go up, and it probably will in the long run but unless you plan on being in that same zero percent down house for the long haul and everyone thinks that they will right it's like when you're getting married uh and and a prenup you're like oh well i don't plan on getting divorced so i don't want to yeah no one goes into marriage planning on getting yeah. divorced right no one you know no one should be buying a house planning on moving like a couple years later everyone's like yeah this is my dream home this is my forever home if it is great, but if if not, take a look at that rent versus um, own calculator. Yeah, definitely look at the rent versus own calculator. And you know, people do move; they move very often. And if you haven't paid that note down, now think of that. So think of this: like, what's the interest rate on a hundred percent financing? I mean, like, the guy's a billionaire for a reason. He's charging you probably a pretty penny to do so. I mean, the high rates. Yeah, you lock into a high rate, but like the payment. Is going to be pretty significant because you, your rates got you to can't be high refinance. At 100%. If, you if you refinance, refinance you got to pay the three percent. You back. owe fifteen grand basically. Yeah. You got to pay the the balloon payment. Yeah, so you you always have to remember that um, you can't probably refinance that at a hundred percent anymore. You because where else are you going to get a hundred percent loan? So if you have to, if you refinance, you got to worry or you got to um, rely on the fact that your property has increased in value. And if it hasn't, if it's gone down one percent, you're done. You know, you've got to put, you know, refinance at that thing. It's, I think he said it's, isn't it? Oh, that was, no, it was a different story. But 100% loan, who's going to give you 100% again? There's not very many options for you. And, you know, if it goes down, then you're screwed and you're staying there. You're, you're not able to move. And this is where, that's why I always say, like, you got to be careful on this stuff with 100% because the littlest shift in the market, you're now underwater. You can't move. You can't move. And then, you think about, oh, I'll just rent it out. Well, you're doing 100% financing. Is that market rate and rent, right? You're probably high on the mortgage, higher than the rental uh, income would be. So then you're at a negative, um, you know. So you're thinking, does this actually make sense for me? You have to think of the the other things that could happen in life. And, you know, markets change quickly, like we've seen from spring to fall to wherever. And they can change because of interest rates. And they can change with with inventory. And so, you know, you're putting yourself at risk by doing 100%. I wouldn't personally do it. I always put something down. And, you know, when I put 10% down on my first one, 
I saw my property value drop like 20, 20%, right? And so I was stuck with that thing and I was renting it out at a negative every month and I was losing money. And so like, take it from me, this thing, this stuff happens. It's How much real. were you losing, if you don't mind me asking, per month? Um, I have to go back years, but um, I would say at one point, three to $600 a month, depending on, on when it was. So like, let's call it just $500. That's, I mean, that's $500 a month. I mean, that's... That could be like a car payment. That's, that's like a, a car payment. It's like that's a real a loan payment. I mean, that is a, like an aggressive amount. Yeah, and that was at a three hundred thousand dollar condo. The, my my first one that I bought, and it went down to two hundred and sixty grand. You know, I ended up selling it for two sixty something. Right, I bought it for three twenty. So these these are the things that you have to be careful on 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 you know buying at the top of the market. People don't know or don't realize how it's going to affect them or when the market's going to fall. People predict this stuff all the time. Oh, the market's going to fall. You watch. All these guys talking about, you know, they don't know. No one knows. They can try to predict it, but, you know, just, so don't go on the the big um, headlines. Headlines are, are to get your attention on anything out there. And again, remember that real estate is local and you have to keep up on the trends and know what you're talking about. Personally, stay away from 100% financing, in my opinion. Yeah, I'd be very, very uh, skeptical, very uh, tread lightly, I should say, because a lot of the skeptics are saying it could happen again. You know, it this, can is, happen this tomorrow, is how man. things crash as people put down 0% or you, you, I mean, you can like finance at anything. Like you could walk into like Bob's Discount Furniture. I guess, I guess they just call it Bob's now. You walk into Bob's and, and finance a couch. Dude, I was buying something on Amazon or on shop and it was like 60 bucks. And it was like, or twelve dollars a month. <laughs> hear me out on this: four payments of yeah. twenty-one dollars. Yeah, it's crazy. And I was like, man, if someone—I mean, that company, whoever offers like Clara or whatever the name is—they're probably making so much money. So much. They're probably money. making like one cent on like five million different people. Yeah, they make it on the stupidity of Americans, right? Like it's like, hey, they're, they're stupid enough to to buy this thing and like not be able to pay for it. No, just do it in four easy installments. That's crazy. And and yeah, you can finance anything. It's amazing how much credit card debt people are in. You know, I don't have credit card debt. I pay mine off every month and it's some months it's high, man. That's yeah. It's a high payment. Well, you like, gotta get the points going, dude. I, I have Miguel's tons of Miguel's in Mexico on points. The guy's I travel uh, on points. a ninja. You every travel time. on points. Oh yeah. Okay. All of my real estate expense. I mean, my real estate credit card is huge some months, right? And so like you think Fifteen thousand points a month, twenty thousand points a month, whatever it is, whatever my thing, that's adding up so quickly. So then we go on vacations on that stuff. So um, uh, on other people's expenses because most people don't pay it off every month and they're paying a high interest rate. And you know, it's just I, I mean, I'll, I'll say like, as I get older, right? I'm like, be conservative with your money. Start thinking about like, do I really need this? Do I really need to spend this on a credit card? If you're not paying your credit card every month. I did it when I was younger, you know, I needed certain things or like when I was buying my first car, I was like, yeah. And then every car I bought since then was like undervalued and I have to come up with more money and refinance more of that into your thing. So now it's not that case, but I remember those days and, and it's like, is it worth it um, to, to buy that fancy thing that your friend has that fancy suit or those clothes that are name brand or whatever I was in it, you know, but you don't need it. You, you had name brand clothes. <laughs> I did, man. It was back in the day. Sean, no, I was Sean like, has wise in his years. I, I you know, I, back then in the eighties, man, nineties, you know, I wanted certain things, but it wasn't the brands of as of today, right? It wasn't the Gucci or I don't even know what's what was big like anymore, the but. number one thing, like materialistic wise, like a red Corvette, oh. or what was like the one thing that you wanted, and maybe you got it, or maybe you just thought better. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. You know, it's funny. We used to play that game, like. Uh, did you ever play that game when, when you were younger where you're like, you do these like, like little flip games and like you put like Porsche, Lamborghini and like, which one are you going to own? Oh yeah. You, and you yeah. do some weird origami right. or like thing with your fingers and then one pops up. Yeah. Yeah. But it's funny. It's like, you know, once you are older and you can see things from the side that you saw it, you know, you grew up through it. Um, life changes quickly, man. Like, like all of a sudden I'm like, man, I've been doing this 20 years, like 20 years went like, I mean, there were a lot of struggles in that 20 years, but I think back and I'm like, wow, that was 20 years ago that I was selling my first house and it was scary and it was a, it was such a big, big thing to get over. I don't know. Anyways, I digress. Um, big things that I wanted back then, 
I mean, it was small potatoes compared to what, <laughs> what I'm thinking about now. A brand new yeah. stereo. Yeah. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, okay, Sean, let's move on to in or out, whether you are in or out on a property. This one's okay. in Bethesda. I would like to introduce Holy you to 6699 MacArthur Boulevard, listed for 23500000 Six beds, nine and a half bathrooms, 11,500 oh, square feet. Cow. Standing as Bethesda's premier estate offering, 6699 MacArthur Boulevard is amongst only a handful of world-class waterfront properties within the entire capital region, towering over the Potomac River, Old world elegance meets contemporary luxuries in an enchanting intersection of craftsmanship and art designed by an all-star team of acclaimed artisans compromising, uh, comprising architect Frank and Lawson and master builder Leonard Nurmi of CDC Builders. The estate's nearly 12,000 square feet of interior space has been meticulously transformed by the current owner through a three-year renovation by Boa Builders. Mm. Sean, for 23 and a half Million dollars, are you in or out on Bethesda's most expensive property? Matt, this place is gorgeous. Um, you know what I, What struck me was the dark paint they're using. I love that dark, like... Moody. Dark, yeah, moody walls with moody ceilings. Uh, the staircase is black. That was cool. Like, going up the stairs. Was that black carpet? It was just just very well done on the inside. Um Meticulous. Now, yeah. I, Do you know where I, you're at with MacArthur Boulevard? I, I don't know my exact location, but I don't know that it's going to matter too much. But go ahead. Okay, yeah. So, so think McLean yep, right on the other McLean. side. Yeah. I mean, I'm saying I'm in on this thing. You know why? I'll give you a couple reasons. Number one, you've got river views, right? You're across from McLean. McLean is so pricey, but this thing is massive, right? And if you talk about our, our boy Dan Snyder. Dan Snyder was trying to get what for his house? Thirty-five million, I think it was at least yeah. twenty-three million compared to for there. I think this is nicer than Dan Snyder's house, personally. Yeah. Um, I don't know the difference in square footage, but I think the, like the quality the, wise, the quality like of this is way better than that. At twenty-three million, thirteen thousand dollars less than his was priced at. Granted, his didn't sell, and he gave it to charity, which was was actually pretty nice of him. Um, I think I'm in on this one. I'm yeah. I'm going to buy it if I had twenty-three million and I was looking in Bethesda and, you know, this is. This is a stunning house. I don't need it, but if if I was that kind of guy that I needed it, I'd buy this one, yeah. This one is listed by Daniel Heider with TTR uh, yeah. Sotheby's International Realty. Just saw Daniel speak the other day. Yeah, we did. did. Did very well. Um, Sean, are, so you said you're in. At what price are you in at? You think it's going to go for 23 and a half? I mean, most of these properties that are um, this high price typically don't. So I'll, I'll throw them an offer at 19 million. You said earlier, like it's... Opposite, Mc, I said opposite McLean, and you yeah. said McLean is nice. I mean, what might be nicer than McLean is that kind of Potomac, Bethesda area. Like, oh, yeah. they're pretty comparable oh, in yeah. terms of like you can find some some bad boys mm -hmm. over in the Bethesda Potomac area. Sean, I'm so in on this house. Um, this it's a retreat. It's a compound. Mm -hmm. It is an estate overlooking the water. I love that you don't actually have to access it on MacArthur. There's like a little private kind of meandering uh, street that you take. So there's there's some more privacy there. You look out over the Potomac. Everything has been done uh, to the tens. Uh, yeah, and gorgeous. I'm I'm in. Um, you're gonna go 19. I think I'm I gonna think go probably a little richer than that. Maybe. Yeah, I was just gonna say I'm gonna up your offer. I'm gonna go like I'm gonna 21. go 21. I'm gonna no, I, I'll go 20. Okay. I'll, I'll top out at 20. Yeah, I think 19 might be a little loose, a little light. So, you know, maybe I'll start there, but I'll, I'll end up around, you know, I, I'd probably go 21 for this. I can't yeah. imagine what a buyer would say when they walk in and it doesn't meet their criteria. Would they just say, oh, it's it doesn't have a 10,000 square foot dance floor that I'm looking for. <laughs> like, what doesn't this house Has have? A beautiful infinity pool. Like, look at that staircase. So the, the woodwork, is that woodwork that goes around? Like, they, that's amazing. Yeah, the millwork. It's just... And then the wood ceilings and a wood wine. We cellar. need to put this uh, brokers open on our calendar. Yeah, whenever. is there one? I mean, you know what? I don't. Do you have your Maryland license? I, I do. You, you I do. Have Maryland license. I do not have my Maryland license. And someone asked, "Oh, like was that by design?" You damn right, it was by design. <laughs> I designed myself not to do business in Maryland. Yeah, but. you got to understand. Like we we live like right on the border of DC and Maryland, and the the contracts are completely different. Everything is completely different. I do have all three, but man, it's 
it's different when you have to relearn. You're like, oh yeah, okay, this is this way. It's it's tough. But if you're a Maryland buyer, reach out to me because I know a great agent that can help you out, and I can set up and that I'll referral. I'll get it for you between twenty and twenty one million. Let's oh, do it. Oh, look at that. I don't know. I think Daniel, <laughs> Daniel Heider Heider like, <laughs> drives a hard bargain. Daniel, if you're watching, drop a comment down below. Let us know if uh, Sean can negotiate that down yeah, for you. Let's do it. And if uh, if you like this episode, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Comment down below if you're in in or out. And for Sean, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, we'll see you then. And Matt. And Matt. Take care. For Sean and myself, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Take care. See ya.